you come up against legal and practical issues every day. QuickCall gives you direct access to our team of specialist education advisors. Your queries will be resolved quickly and with certainty of cost. Now at the outset and long before these schemes go to market, the governing body will be used to working very closely indeed with the Education Funding Agency, or EFA, in putting together title information with regard to the ownership of the site, in providing information with regard to any staff or employees who may be transferring or affected by the scheme, and in assisting with the carrying out of site condition and building condition surveys. More importantly, however, the school will need to input very closely indeed into the design of the building in so far as it needs to ensure that the school's curriculum can be fully met. Now, following that, the governing body will enter into a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, with the EFA, which will not be legally binding, but will be evidence of the school's commitment to the project. At that point onwards, the school's involvement is going to be necessarily limited. The Education Funding Agency will go on and advertise the scheme in accordance with the EU procurement rules and ultimately seek to negotiate and enter into a project agreement with a private sector contractor to design, build and maintain the exterior fabric of the new school building for a period of up to 25 years. Now under the project agreement, the EFA will retain a number of key project risks centrally. However, it will look to flow down to the school or academy trust a number of project specific risks in the form of back-to-back -back agreements known colloquially as governing body agreements. Now whilst we haven't seen a draft of these governing body agreements we have seen a draft of the project agreement so we are able to anticipate just what risks are likely to be flowed down to schools and academies and how schools and academies might seek to mitigate the effects of these risks.